feud that he was sort of having with the Koch brothers, I know you've written a lot about the Koch brothers, it's really phony, isn't it, because they're basically on the same page, wouldn't you say? Yes, it's a tremendous distraction. I uh, have been studying Charles Koch and the plan that he's been developing and the ideas that they've weaponized for over a decade now, and uh, I have learned one thing, which is never pay any attention to any individual uh, play and instead look at the long game that he's playing. Once you understand that long game and you understand the strategy, you can get a better sense of what the pieces are and what to anticipate. A case in point is this. Suddenly we're seeing signs of light between them. All the other things that did nothing to upset Charles Koch, all the horrors that we've seen in, in different places, nothing about what happened at the border, etc. Why now? Why now? Because they are this close to getting Brett Kavanaugh, a Koch-selected Supreme Court justice right. on the court just in time to affect what Koch is actually seeking, which is, in the language of the architect whose ideas he's weaponized, changes in our Constitution so radical as to be called a constitutional revolution. They yeah, want to transform our Constitution in a radical and fundamental way, and we are all being distracted by the President's tweets while this is going on. Our Constitution is already the most restrictive of majoritarian democracy in the world. We have what are called four veto, four, what's called veto points. We have four, most people have one, maybe two, maybe three, we have four. So these guys are so essentially greedy that they want to add more veto points to what, what we what, have. What is a veto point? What do you mean? So, so things like the Electoral College, right, like the capacity of the Senate to be Veto, et cetera. Right. But what they want to actually put well, into effect is instead of a constitution of checks and balances, as we have now, a constitution of locks and bolts. And while we're all distracted by Donald Trump's tweets, the network that Charles Koch is funding, groups like the American Legislative Exchange Council, have been lining up authorizations for a constitutional convention. They now have 28 of the 34 authorizations needed to call the first ever Article 5 constitutional convention since our constitution was crafted. And, and they have 10 liberty amendments, they call them, teed up and ready to go. And we haven't been paying any attention at all with exception of groups like Common Cause. That law would be unconstitutional. But if we change the Constitution... Then we could make all sorts of crazy laws. Now you're catching on. What if people say you're not good enough to be in the Constitution? Good news, Amendment. They ratified you. You're in the U.S. Constitution. Oh, yeah. Doors open, boys. <laughs> Well, what are the ten amendments? What are, what's like the top two horrible ones? Yeah, okay, so this, this is also an example of how like folks on our side could be a little bit more curious and stop thinking that we know everything and actually right. read the other side's stuff and right. pay attention. You're right. Because some of these, th th there's a book that was a bestseller on the right that none of us have heard of called The Liberty Amendments uh, that goes into this, and you can Google them, but they include uh, um, a balanced budget amendment, which polls well until people understand that it would mean the end of Social Security and Medicare and all these other things that we value. Uh, they right. also include putting voter ID in the U.S. Constitution, and they are so radical that they actually include revoking the 17th Amendment. Now, nobody's going to remember what the 17th Amendment is, so I'll just tell you real quick. It was a progressive <laughs> era victory that let the people directly elect our U.S. senators instead of having them selected right. by state governments. Right. Senators are, used, right, used to be appointed. Exactly. Right. And okay. the, the, the state government is the easiest for corporations to capture. And the mm. Coke network knows this, and they've and, been capitalizing on it, and they now control 30 states. And they're essentially putting a chokehold around progressive policy nationally and in the states at the local level with something called preemption. They are quite aware that they are a minority. So I actually quote right. Charles Koch in the book when he says in 1997, when he's really launching this effort in earnest, he says, since we are greatly outnumbered, the failure to use our superior technology ensures failure. Meaning, they know they are a permanent majority. Repeated historical experience has shown them that the majority of the American people would never sign up for the America they are trying to bring into being. An America with no Social Security, no Medicare, right. no anti-discrimination legislation, no protection of our air and water, on and on and on. So, how are they going to get around that to still get what they want? Stealth. And doing things like voter suppression, using the myth of voter fraud, gerrymandering, right. destroying labor unions, and Planned Parenthood sources of collective and we power don't on the pay,